do you get anyone to like you, whether it be at work or in a social scenario? Well, let me give you three key aspects that will get you to connect with practically anyone. The first thing that I want you to focus on is what I call the Duchenne smile. The Duchenne smile is a natural smile. And our tendency whenever we speak is to speak like this, where we're not necessarily mindful of our facial expressions, but we're just talking like this and you're not able to really connect. But the moment I start to smile like this as I speak, notice what happens. You feel that warmth, right? And it's because I've practiced literally smiling as I speak. So if you're struggling with this, if you're struggling to create a natural smile, one where there's creases at the sides of your eyes, what I want you to do is I want you to take your index fingers by the sides of your mouth like this, pull up while your lips are closed, then show your teeth like this, and then practice speaking like this. It may feel awkward, but trust me, as you do this more often, you will notice that your smile will come off as more natural. Then you lower your hands and then you'll be able to keep talking like this. Notice what I'm doing. This is so important because when you speak, being mindful of your facial expressions, your tone changes. Look what happens in the opposite direction. If I were to frown my face like this, notice what happens. My voice immediately changes to show that I'm angry. Or if I'm really sad, right? All of a sudden my voice changes. It's because your facial expressions are the remote control to the emotions behind your words. So whenever you smile with a natural smile, people are going to reciprocate that positive energy. And that's going to make you immediately more likable. The second piece that's crucial to building rapport with others is to ask open-ended questions. Ask open-ended questions. Whenever you meet people, your goal should not be to speak at the surface, right? I'm not here to talk about the weather. I'm not here to talk about a particular city. I'm not here to talk about a certain type of food. What I am here to do is to speak at the deeper level about you. This is you. I care to learn about you. I care to learn about your motivations. I care to hear about your passions. I care to hear about your frustrations. I care to hear about all the things that matter to you. And how do I get there? Well, I ask certain questions like what, how, why. For example, what motivated you to become a founder? Or what drove you to move from Pakistan to the United States? Or how did you become so passionate about X topic? These are great questions, but the more you ask them, the more you show curiosity in who they are and their story, the more they're going to open up, the more then they're going to want to hear your story. Because as humans, again, just like I mentioned with the Duchenne smile, we're born to reciprocate. So if you can start getting curious about what's here versus staying up here, I promise you, you're going to start to build more instant connections with people. And then finally, what happens? Once you've asked these open-ended questions, this allows you to start sharing more about yourself. And this is the third piece. I want you to be great at telling stories. I want you to be able to master telling personal stories about traumatic experiences from your childhood, celebratory moments from later in life, whatever it is, I don't care. But... How can you tell great stories, particularly when you may not have three to five minutes to just ramble? If you only have 30 to 45 seconds, I'm going to give you three approaches to telling compelling stories, okay? And I'm going to list them out, and then I'm going to describe each of them one by one. The first way to do it is to describe a defining moment, a defining moment. The second way is you can describe a defining emotion, okay? Okay. Or the third way is you can give me some dialogue. Now, there are other ways you can do this, but the point is if you just do one of these three things, you will immerse your audience and get them to start having these unanswered questions that they're going to want to know what's going to happen next. Let me give you an example. If I were to take this one, defining moment, let's say that I met somebody and we instantly hit it off. And they wanted to know, what's your story? How did you get into table tennis, which is one of the sports I played for more than 12 years? Well, I can say, I can recall when I was just five years old and my father decided to get me to train by hitting a table tennis ball against a wall rather than a table because 
He was too worried that I would hit my head against the corner guards and get a concussion because I was so short. It's a defining moment of how I started. But what it does is it takes me to a specific moment where someone can visualize how short I was, the corner guards at the table that prevented me from injuring myself. It's immersive, right? And when it's immersive, people start to have more questions. For example, oh, how old were you? Oh, where did you start growing up playing? Oh, what motivated you to do that? But when you bring them there, it's a lot easier for them to respond versus speaking at a high level. The second thing is you can define an emotion. So another example of this, hey, let's say that I were, again, on the topic of table tennis, speaking about a transformative moment from the sport that's affected me to this day. Well, I might say, when I went to Buchan, South Korea, I can remember feeling terrified when the head coach took one of my best friends on the team aside and beat him up till his butt bled just for making a mistake. And it was at that, that, that very moment when I knew that becoming a professional table tennis player wasn't in the cards for me. And it gave me all sorts of perspective. But what happens? I show you how terrified I was. That simple word terrified and descriptive scene of exactly what it is that terrified me. Right Now you start to wonder, why did he even beat up your best friend? Did he deserve it? Was he going to do it to you? Did he do it to you? Why? All these questions come up. And then the final thing is dialogue. Right? So dialogue is literally reenacting when two people are speaking to each other. You have person A, you have person B. And the moment you start speaking in dialogue, all of a sudden you're reliving a scene. And when you relive a scene, people are hooked in. So, for example, if I were to say, maybe a particular story might be how I got into communication. I spoke to many different communications coaches as I was building a startup to help people improve their skills. And I recall one particular coach saying, I don't believe AI can change how we improve our speaking skills. I asked, why not? And she said, because AI removes the human element. And I fundamentally disagreed, right? All of a sudden, you're starting to wonder more about this exchange. What happened as a result? Did you end up building the startup? Tell me more, right? But what happens is whenever you start speaking in terms of dialogue, people are going to be more enraptured by what you say. So if you were to summarize all of this, the key is to be likable. You need to be able to smile as you speak. You need to be able to also tell stories just like this. And of course, ask open-ended questions, getting people to open up more and more. And if you can do these three things well, I promise you, you're going to build more meaningful relationships than you ever have before. Thanks.